Moving on then to um, plum pudding and atomic structure. Now this is the um, explanation of how we come to the model of the atom that we see today, where we have a positive nucleus surrounded by electron shells with electrons in them. First of all, this was the plum pudding model. Now the plum pudding model, you'll need to recognise this picture, had electrons dotted throughout a sea of positive charge. So they knew about electrons then, but they didn't know about the nucleus. And that's how they thought atoms were like. So you need to know this idea of sea of positive charge with electrons scattered throughout them. Not only until experiments by Rutherford and Marsden, so you need to recognise these names, and their gold foil experiment, or you might see it as the alpha scattering experiment, or the alpha particle scattering experiment. And they changed from this idea of the plum pudding model to our idea of everything being in a nucleus, or the protons and neutrons in there, or at least the positive charge in there, and the electrons around the outside. These are the three things that they found, and then we'll explain why using this diagram. So Rutherford and Marsden found out that most of the atom was empty space. So most of it, like this, is just empty space. That the mass was concentrated in the middle. And that the nucleus was positively charged. So what they did is they fired an alpha particle at um, some a very, very, very thin piece of gold foil. Now, what an alpha particle is, is just a helium nucleus. So what that means is, if we put the numbers here to help us, it's a helium, so it's got two protons and two neutrons, helium atom, minus the electrons. So if we go up here, it'd be just like taking the electrons away and just using the nucleus for helium, and that would be the alpha particle. So because it's just using the nucleus, it is positively charged. And what they did is they fired this out at this thin piece of gold foil. Now, they were trying to look at the plum pudding model. So what they thought would happen, would there would be um, slight deflections where you'd get, they thought there's plum pudding. So where they, the alpha particles were coming, they thought they would be slightly deflected because of this sphere of positive charge that they thought existed. But they didn't find that at all. What they found actually was that most of the alpha particles just went straight through. So most of the alpha particles went through. And that told them this first point here, that most of the atoms actually empty space. Because if you think about it in terms of down here, they're firing these alpha particles most of the time they were just going straight through the atom and you can see that by their collecting over here now what they also found was some of the alpha particles came straight back again so this was because you'd have the positively charged alpha particle going towards a positively charged nucleus which repelled them straight back out again and that told them this second point and third point here, that the mass was concentrated in the middle and that this contained a positive charge. They didn't use the word proton straight away, but they knew that this contained positive charge because they were being deflected back out again. So what looks like a quite complicated diagram is actually broken down into a few simple discoveries that lead us into this model, which is the nuclear model of the atom. You might be asked in the exam, for example, to compare the plum pudding model and the nuclear model, or you might be able to ask to explain this experiment and the findings that they made, which would be a three or four mark question.